Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Arko Bhattacharya. Uh, I currently work with uh, Solo, and I'm here to talk about Canines, which is a tool that I've been using for about one and a half years now, and I truly love it. So I thought about sharing it with you all. Um, so a couple of years back, I started working with uh, Kubernetes, and like many others, I started with kubectl, uh, simple kubectl get pods. And uh, the, the kubectl cheat sheet became my absolute favorite bookmark, which I used to refer often. As time progressed, I started working with uh, aliases, uh, because it saves time, so much time, right? And I want to give a big shout out to the kubectl ZSH plugin maintainers for making life so much easy that way I still use it. As I started interacting with more and more power users of Kubernetes, I uh, got introduced to canines and was simply blown away by it. So it's a terminal-based user interface uh, that you can use to interact with your Kubernetes clusters. So let's see it in action. So to start canines, you just have to type canines uh, in your terminal, and you'll see the pods running in the default namespace in the beginning. So if you press 0, 0 for all, you'll see all the pods running in the Kubernetes cluster. So I see on the left column uh, on kube system namespace, these pods are currently running. So I'm not going to, now I'm going to install Argo CD in the Argo CD namespace, and you'll see all the pods coming alive on your screen. This is all on, in the terminal. So, and you can click on any of the pods, and you can see what's the container uh, inside it, or what's the image that is being used, uh, whether it's passing readiness check, whether um, the init container has completed or not, and what are the ports exposed uh, on the pod. So it gives a good summary. To delete a pod or any object, you can just do a control D and the pod or any object that gets deleted. In this case, it's a deployment, so you can see that the pod is all already coming up. So to see all the deployments of the cluster, you have to do escape colon deploy, and you'll see all the deployments uh, in the cluster. I can see these are the deployments. So to scale up the deployment, you press S for scale, and I'm changing the replica count to two here so that the two pods for this deployment start up. Now to search for a, an object by keyword, what you have to do is just press slash and then type the keyword. So I'm typing server, and these are the deployments which has a server keyword. I'm selecting all of them using spacebar, and then uh, rec scaling them up together with S for scale. So if I go to the pods, I can see that the pods are coming up. Uh, it's all live, so it's a very nice user interface. Let's go back to the deployment, and let's scale them back down. Same way, uh, slash server, selecting all by spacebar, and then uh, reducing the replica to one. And when I go to the pods view, I can see all the pods uh, in the desired state. To do a port forward, all you have to do is do a shift F for port forward, and it gives helpful suggestions, like what are the container ports uh, on the pod. And I'm port forwarding on localhost 8080. So that's where uh, I'm going to go now, and I'm going to try to log into Argo CD that I just installed. So to log into Argo CD, you'll need a secret value, which is stored in the form of Kubernetes secret. So I'm going back, and I'm typing escape colon SEC for secret. That'll list all the secrets. And to see the value, I'm going to press X, just one keystroke, and I see the decoded value of the secret. And I'm putting it uh, as a password, and I'm signing in. So now I'm signed in. I want to see the logs of the pod. And for that, I just have to go to the pod and press L for log. And I can see all the logs. Uh, if I want to see it in full screen, the option is there F for full screen and W for word wrap. So it's really helpful when, you, when you're working with multiple contexts and you want to switch between contexts. You can just type escape colon context or CTX. It will show you what all contexts are there in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I right now have uh, two more clusters running. So it's very helpful when you're testing with multi-cluster scenarios. So I have two uh, clusters running where I have Istio deployed in both of them. And uh, I have uh, this product page application running in US East 2, which is in the top right and US West 2, or US West 1, which is in the bottom right. So I want to do a failover testing, and I'm tailing the log for the pod. So I pressed L in both of these uh, view. And now I'm going to send some curl on the, on the left tab, 
And as I send curl, all the request is going to the US East 2 at the moment. You can see all the logs on the top right. If I send a few more curls, you'll see the timestamp getting changed there, but nothing is going to the US West 1 yet. So what I'm going to do now is just forcefully scale down the deployment in US East 2. Um, so I'm scaling it down to zero. And now I'm going to send the curl once again. But we won't see any request failing. We'll see the request going to the US West 1, because that's how I set up the failover. So it's pretty nifty when you're testing in a multi-cluster environment. So I've created this cheat sheet to uh, help anyone who's just uh, starting with canines. And I hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, if you have any feedback, or if you have any pro tips to share with me, please do feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to chat about it. Thank you so much for being such a lovely audience.